All right. All right. Hi, everybody. We've had a little conversation, which was really nice to catch up and kind of relax. And uh, we've got good weather here. So we're going to get started. Um, going to show you all. And I will switch to the uh, webcam. Um, I'm going to be painting the second bar on uh, the orchid plate with the border. And we're going to get to do some borders today. And I'm going to switch over. That way I can give you a close up on the um, second bar. And see, and hopefully my camera got it. Okay, so what I have done, um, if you don't look at this part, this is the first fire. I went ahead and started on the petals for the orchid because I didn't want y'all to watch me do 10. I will demonstrate on these. They're not hard to do. They're so much fun because uh, I say that, but if you have like a, I would say OCD, <laughs> where everything has to be perfect, this is not your going to be your fun part, because I, I find that people that are super, super organized want to do everything like polka dots, when you're going to want to do them irregular. So if you uh, paint the um, orchids, I would say don't start, you can start anywhere, but I would say don't start with the uh, spots on it. We would start like we would on the first fire, which I started on the uh, leaves because it's just easier to flow through. But of course, if you're a careful painter or whatever. So again, uh, it is easier if you start with the leaves, but I didn't want to take that much time uh, up watching, you know, for y'all to have to watch me do everyone, but I am going to demonstrate that soon. So just pretend the dots aren't there. I'm going to put this really close so you can see the shading when um, a review with the shading on the leaves. I picked up some like a warm uh, gray, kind of a neutral gray, nothing too light or dark. And I added some Sultan and I think uh, um, maybe a little turquoise is kind of a preference. And some of the areas I added the same ruby, which was like a mid-tone ruby or light ruby mixed in with the gray. So you had a variety of uh, shading of grays. And it, it, it's amazing how much it changes when you go back to putting your spots in there. Um, I did wash a little bit of yellow in there. Now, some of you who are very uh, light painters and very subtle, that's okay if you didn't get enough shading because when you're working with white flowers, it takes a little bit of practice. You, you're gonna put on a lot more color of the colors that are reflected around it. Uh, most of my colors are cool. So um, if I was doing like a warm white, I would probably mix in more like uh, yellow brown or pecans, but this is kind of on the cool side. So I stuck with the uh, ruby and like sultan, uh, maybe a little bit of blue. Um, this color mixture also, I would do my pearls uh, like that or any kind of white flower. So, and we'll, we'll cover that. I think these could use a little bit more color. Again, this was a, typically a second, um, a three-day seminar. So once this is fired, I would go back. And I think I did on a third fire, actually go back and shade it just like your first fire, since I'm not going to have an opportunity to do, do a third fire on this. Again, if you did paint your first fire and it came out a little bit darker than this, then, then um, you may not need that, but it really curves those leaves. And again, we're not going to get to that, but I'm just putting that in there. So when you back and review, and if you are going to paint this, you'll know that I would go back and, and shade that. So what I'm going to do is do like I did on the first fire. Some of y'all I've suggested, y'all may have just put the Chatru screen. And if we have uh, seminars that um, paint a, lo a lot of intricate, like hydrangeas or whatever, it, we're not going to get to the um, leaves on the first day. So unless you're really, really experienced on the wet and wet, um, 
it's okay to just block those in with the uh, the brightest green you have because I like that that really comes out it gets toned down when you shade but for a review I did like a double load if you which is um let me see, you load up with your light color and you come back and shade in your darker, which is something like this. Okay, that's how I did this part. If you just had your light green, you can just go back and do a shaded load. Wet on wet, the color moves and you're not putting a lot of color, you're putting like thin layers so uh, you can go back and just put that. If you don't feel comfortable with the double load, you can just put a little bit of green in there and then go back and just do a, a side load. Um, it's whatever technique I would practice uh, when you're not actually painting something to get that technique down. Everything is basically brush strokes. And I'll start my beginner students sometimes Advanced students need to go back to the beginning and um, just practice your brush strokes and how to hold your brush and how to get your brush properly loaded. I talk a lot, which slows me down in my painting. So I'm painting really fast when I'm not talking. But I'm just gonna go back and, and uh, reinforce this. We may not paint all that because I want to save some time to get to the borders because that's exciting. And I have, uh, we'll see how time goes. I may I throw in a little bit extra bonus of some marbleizing if we have time. Oops, I smeared that. Now, last night I went, I can fix that. I went and put these. Um, spots in, so save a little bit of time. And some of you may need yet another fire, but hopefully, I think most of your leaves, you can get in two fires if you practice that wet on wet. I want that a little darker in there. And if you have more time, you, you're gonna take more time. I'm gonna take more time. I probably went back and um, softened some of my edges that I just kind of blocked in and refined. Okay, I'm looking, I'll make sure I'm in focus here. But, okay, now we're gonna get the gist of that. The other thing I wanted to show y'all, and I like, in my wet on wet that you're not gonna get uh, by putting another layer on is I'll wash. And then this is getting in and getting out. If you have a tendency to sit there and really piddle putter and play around, I would not recommend you washing the pink because if you get it mixed in too much in the green, then you're gonna end up with a real gray color, but we're talking a real swipe. But that is only after we, you have the green, your chartreuse, which is your highlighted area and your shading in. I mean, you get one chance to get in and out. I'll do it with another brush. I don't have to stop and wash my brush out. Um, that's another thing. I find it's really nice to have a uh, couple brushes and I know we all have them, keep them conditioned. But if you don't have to switch brushes, especially when you're working with reds and we're not working with iron colors, your reds will be so much cleaner if you don't have any kind of contamination in your brush. So if you're gonna wash, this is wet right here, I will just kind of swipe a little bit of pink in there and it just is, repetition of color. Um, but in, see, I said, get in and get out. I'm not gonna mix that in because if you start brushing around in there, you're gonna get mud. Okay, I am gonna, we're gonna pretend, again, I'll go back and shade this. I'm skipping that part because I wanna get to the dots, um, the, the spots, excuse me, the dots. They look like dots, irregular dots. But I want to review coming back over here in the base of it. 
I am going to do the same thing, which is, you know, the wet on wet. Put in a little bit of chartreuse green, side loading. And this is a C stroke. Um, that's another one of those practice strokes I do with my students. And you do have to do a spear, but you're going to get really up on that chisel edge and do a C stroke. And I think I mentioned in the first video, the first painting, that this is also how I paint hummingbird wings and other wings. Let me make sure I'm getting in there. Well, this plate's going to get uh, heavy. Get my workout, get my arm workout. Hate it when you start waving with your arms and it's like you stop waving and your arms don't. <laughs> anyway. Let me get back working out, lifting these plates as a workout. Okay, the thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to go in a little bit of ruby because I want some ruby in that. And it's just so pretty. But again, I'm not working it too much. I'm just washing a little bit of color. If you are scared of this, do it on another fire. But you're not going to quite get the same effect as you would doing it wet on wet. And what that's going to look like, I'm going to go back to the original. Look how pretty that is in there. But I didn't muddy it up. I mean, I just like touched it, got in and out. Um, and it's just, it's, I think it's a little bit more exciting than just green and it's repeating the color. Okay, the fun part, uh, let me see. We're gonna go back and reinforce that. You could, I think I did put a little bit of, I'm looking at the original here. Uh, I had, grab another brush. Again, it just goes faster if you keep your brushes separate. A little bit of pecan, a little bit of yellow. And again, up on that chisel edge. And I'm just gonna shove some color in there. Oop, that's shoving a little bit too much. Again, don't get too thick. Do what I say, not what I'm doing, because I'm doing it wrong. Okay, and you could put a little bit of, a um, little bit of that ruby in there, just to highlight it there. Put a little wash. That's a little strong. You know, if you mess it up, you can wipe it off and start over, no big deal. It's just kind of uh, your preference. But I like unusual, not, not perfect because nature is kind of imperfect. This is the best part. Okay, we're gonna tackle these. I smeared that, I'll uh, refine that. We're gonna get to the spots, so much fun. I try, because it's been a long time since I, I did this technique. My favorite um, is odorless, to use odorless mineral spirits. You know how you take your, your paint off the palette? Sometimes you don't want to mix paint all just to sign your name and you just mix a little bit. I can't do turf, but odorless mineral spirits for me works. Uh, yesterday, the day before, I did try, um, um, to, oh, what is it, Chir turpinoid? It was too oily, it did not work. The only thing I did was scrape a little bit of um, your ruby color. You are going to want to add a little bit of black with it because this is really not black. It looks black, but it is really, um, I don't know if the camera will pick up. It is really ruby. I know, I'm sorry about the glare, y'all just saw that. Um, ruby and black mixed together. And some of you will maybe, I know we don't have the, um, the volume of the voices on. Why can't you just use, um, you could use a drawing medium, but I love to use the Olus mineral spirits because it moves. And I like to do texture like tree barks and everything. For me, it works. Yes, you could uh, use a drawing medium, but you have to be careful not to put it on too heavy and I get in one fire the depth that I need. And I like, uh, this is a, um, well, 
Michael Turner named it a lizard lick brush, but it's a script brush. You could use a scroller, a liner, but I just like the way this tapers. And um, this is just odorless mineral spirits. I'm just gonna put a little bit here. It does evaporate quite fast, but it allows you to thin this paint. Again, I just pull some ruby and some black and I'll have to continue because this is gonna evaporate. And this is the fun part. I mean, you just wanna get, drop some in there and a regular. The other thing too, I've noticed, don't do your dots. You know, I've seen students do this. That is just like polka dots, okay? You're gonna wanna get in there and do some big. You're gonna wanna do some small. I think this is so therapeutic. It's just so much fun to do um, interesting shapes. You can even stick a little mini Mickey Mouse ears. I think somebody had uh, accidentally or just, I don't know, subconsciously did like a little, um, uh, look like Mickey Mouse ears or whatever. But you're gonna take your time and get those dots in, uh, dots. I keep wanting to call them dots, they're spots. There is another hybrid of orchid that the um, spots are really, really big. I'll do this. Again, I may not finish this, but as you go, make sure your brush is sideways. You can grab some, if you can do turf, it's fine. I do the odorless mineral spirits, really cheap. We're talking Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, that just works the best for me. As you can see, it's already evaporating. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. But then when you do this, you're gonna have to take your time. But the main thing that you need to watch for is that you don't do like polka dots here. Um, if it's a little bit too runny, you can grab a Q-tip and you can't mess it up. You've got that first fire painting underneath. Um, this is an opportunity to kind of um, make your, um, tips of your petals a little bit more prominent. Just have fun with it. I love this part. And again, keep your brush tip level. Don't do this. It, it, just, it, it just works better if they're sideways. So consistently turn your piece and you're gonna get sideways. Irregular shapes, but it, it makes a difference if you follow that petal this way from Oh, you can do it from the tip in or out, just the angle of your brush, because I've had students that in the, I don't know, they just, it just looks like this. That is just so boring. And then just make sure you have it sideways. Um, I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Um, it's another option um, that these 20 years ago, some of the orchids, or like this really bright chartreuse green, you would um, just add a little bit of um, salt in so you can change your piece up to do something like this. If you don't wanna do the border, these were some old frames. So this is an option if, if white flowers can be very challenging to do, but I think we should challenge ourselves. And I mean, if it doesn't work out, it's just porcelain and you've learned a lesson. I've learned more from my mistakes than anything. I'm gonna show you one more piece. Again, this uh, particular Brazilian orchid had the really, really big spots on them. Um, they're a little bit more, um, they have a different um, shape and everything. But if you re go back and uh, just look at some orchid pictures. So that's another option for you. This is with the shading and the shadows and everything. So you can change it up, but I wanted to teach white. Didn't think about your Zoom class being <laughs> white on white, but I think it's working out quite well. Um, I'm gonna just hint on, uh, continue doing your, um, uh, your petals. And you're gonna treat this the exact same way as in the first painting. So I'll just kind of 
um, I don't know if all of you have taken the first class, but it, it is uploaded on the iPad uh, website and you can go back and review it. And then you'll, then you'll know, um, I'm gonna move, we're just gonna pretend this is done. We're gonna pretend all the leaves are done because I wanna get to the borders. Oops. So glad I have some other extra space here. Um, just a little review on, it's just like on the first, the first fire, first painting, you gotta go back and reinforce these little edges. So go back and watch the first painting and do that. Um, I will do highlight that little ruffle. Uh, I call it a ruffle. It's the bottom petal. When, again, wet on wet is great. You can add a little bit of uh, white or cream or maybe even a little yellow into white. It helps the paint blend better. If I was just to um, do the bottom petal with that technique and try to wash it in, it won't move as well as if you had some wet. This is just white. I like like a cream uh, color. You can wash just a hint of yellow. Be careful, some of you yellows are really, really strong. So, and maybe stronger than you want. I'm gonna put it in a little stronger because the camera is not picking up just how bright that is. I'm gonna to switch to a um, bigger flat brush. Side load. If your ruby is not quite dark enough, you can actually get in that shaded load with a titch of black. Um, if you have a dark ruby, then you're fine. I'm gonna get up on this chisel edge and it's again, it's like the C stroke here, but you are really, really wiggling. Spend some time in the loading zone. Get your paints in your palette to where it's flipped and you have a, a smooth area. That is the one thing. If it's all piled up, you don't have a loading zone, you won't get properly loaded. I'm gonna do this real quick and then we are gonna get to the borders. Okay, wait. I would not expect y'all to paint with me. Um, this is like really, really fast. Well, we only have an hour and I am hoping to get some other cool information to your Okay, and that's really going to be enough. I, I rarely have to go. I'm just going to take the corner of my brush. I'm going to drag in some that I don't like that right there. So instead of wiping it out, I'm going to take the corner of my brush and pull down. Because I have that white, it blends very nicely. All right, so after you get everything painted, it should pretty much look like this for your second painting. Again, I'm gonna repeat myself on another fire. If you need to go back and shade, just like in the first painting, it will uh, really make your uh, petals look 3D. And then we're gonna cover this next. Okay, what I have done also is you did not have to do the, the mother pearl or some kind of light, um, I don't know if I used a, like a rainbow opal, whatever. Um, you did not have to have that fired in because actually on the original piece, I did the texture border first and then I went back over it with Mother of Pearl. So that will be on your third painting, which I'm not gonna do for you, but I'm just giving you the information. Um, and also because this is wet right here, um, we usually save that for another are. So I have a plate just like it. And this is where we do the border. I do have the uh, mother pearl already here, but no big deal. What you're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to do this 
the white texture border. I will not do the enamel dots because that's, I would say that for another fire. If you're really good, you can do it on that same fire. But if you get one um, messed up, then you can't just wipe it off. So I like to have that. Um, the other thing that I'm going to have to do a little bit differently for this um, border is this is not what you're going to do. This is purple food coloring. Okay, I had, I had some friends that I did this white border and they couldn't see the consistency that I mixed my base for gold. They couldn't see me applying it. And when I took the, um, um, the stickers off and everything, guess what you couldn't see. So I tested, and you almost can't see the lines here. This actually had the base for gold with my armadillo oil. And armadillo oil is a very drying medium, but it sets up really fast. And this is gonna be in real time here to remove these. It fired out. So um, I was so happy. Is y'all gonna be able to see the consistency of my base for gold with the armadillo oil? It is just, I didn't put the jar, let me tell you, it's, it's just a hot mess. It's worse than glitter to mess with this food coloring. It just gets everywhere. It just grows. It gets everywhere. So this is not something you're going to do at home. You're just going to mix base for gold with your armadillo oil or drying medium. I had a chemist formulate this for me because I tried other drying mediums. And when I dried the resist, um, I mean, which is your resist or did the scratch technique. I mean, I was really ha struggling to correct if, if you didn't have it um, buffered down. Um, well, let me go back a step because yo, I, I've already put the uh, stickers here. I need to show that. I'm getting so excited that um, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping a step here. Um, I just wanted to get to this so much. Um, okay. I have these vinyl designs. If you have a Cricut cutter, it, um, it's just vinyl. You don't have to use my stuff. I started cutting these out and selling them like 10 years ago because when I got the laser stickers, which are absolutely wonderful because you can reuse them, I wasn't able to use the negative part, this part. And some of the des designs were so intricate that um, I just, I wanted, I wanted variation. Okay, so I have a combination of the laser stickers and my vinyl. I don't care that this is going off that edge. Um, in the original piece, I have, um, I think, butterflies that are half on, half off. There, it doesn't matter. It's just movement. Um, when you place these designs, you just can peel and stick, but you want a combination of some that have more... Um, uh, not a lot of cuts in them because then some of your uh, mother of pearl is going to show through. So if you have these really tiny little things, they're not going to show. So you kind of want a balance of thick, thin, just a lot of movement. And honestly, all um, I had some that was called weeding that you pulled out. And this takes um, a little while in class um, placing, but don't don't like spend forever um, hurting your brain, you know, like, oh, is this the right? It's just movement and texture. Um, so you're just really peeling and sticking. I did a section here so we could get busy. When we have time in class, then you can kind of play and place and everything. Um, also, if you're doing a border, um, you may want to tape this off, but with my, my particular oil, once it's dry and it dries really, really fast, you can just, you can clean that edge with just like an orange wood stick and um, you're good. So I did this for you. It's, again, it's peel and stick. You also could, I'm getting out of frame here, all right, you could just put that where I make that mixture on and dry it and it dries faster with like a heat stamping tool. And I'm gonna do that in real time. Um, it, it goes pretty fast and just scratch. But again, if you, I tried every drying medium 
Again, you do not do this at home. I just, I'm putting this food coloring in so you can see where I've applied. Because if I put the white, you just may not be able to see the consistency. And that was, uh, that's one of those test things I did. So I'm taking base for gold and a little bit of my armadillo oil. And then I'll add the food coloring so you can see. Um, I got, I got ahead of myself. I got so excited. This is just so much fun. And I got to um, do this with the wisteria class. And the first day she said, when are we gonna get to the board? I said, tomorrow, tomorrow. She goes, I came all this way. I want to do it today. And I'm like, oh, well, uh, <laughs> tomorrow. But we got it all done. I am just mixing this up. It's gonna be kind of like, um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this purple, which is a nightmare. If I get it all over my hands, y'all, you're just gonna have to look at purple all over the place. And I'm looking at my time. I got a time here, a timer here at this time. So I didn't have to um, rely on somebody. Hey, what time is it? So again, your, your uh, base for gold and white, uh, the armadillo oil is not, you don't need the food coloring. I'm just doing this so y'all can see the consistency. And some dear friends helped me so much. I was so glad. You're going to do this a little runny. Help me with some um, tests soon and uh, critique, which was great. I thanked him so much. Kind of, I saw what I needed to change. So I'm glad I had that practice. And if some people are going to fast forward this, this could be like, what is that purple stuff? And where do I get it? Y'all, it's just food coloring. It will fire out. Look at this. It will fire out. It goes away. It's just so you can see for the camera. Okay, I get an acrylic um, brush, cheap brush. That way I don't have to clean out my, um, my good brushes. Um, if you clean them out right away, you can clean them out with like a little bit of acetone. I tried odorless mineral spirits. D-limonene cleans it pretty good, but acetone real quick. I don't worry about conditioning these brushes because um, I'll just use them for this. Okay, and uh, this is gonna be fast, y'all. And also, I think the, the food coloring too is gonna help me since I'm not taping this part off. Um, I'm gonna be able to see to clean it up. I'm just, I mean, sloppy. Yes, it's sloppy because I'm gonna go back and sponge it. Again, I'm going faster than I normally would because I'm trying to get this in. And if we have time, I might be able to show y'all that marbleizing technique, which is on my other borders in the first, I, I didn't know if I had, um, I went back and reviewed uh, this morning real quick to see what I had showed y'all some other examples of orchids. But this is going to go really fast. And I promise you, it will look just like the white border on the original piece it doesn't it's like how can that be well you're um this is uh watercolor i mean watercolor it's um water base so your water and your oil just like in the marbleizing they don't, don't mix it just evaporates out i tested it so i'm sure i just took a little cosmetic sponge and ripped it It's not gonna be pretty, but you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing and how I can correct any issues. Okay, I'm gonna grab my little, um, this works so much better than a blow dryer. A little bit more on the edge. And I'm gonna show you how fast this, um, This dries. I do have, I think, two uh, videos on my Facebook. Um, and when I originally dem demoed with the uh, final designs, I did it in black and white and I showed how to do the positive and the negative. Again, that's another lesson. 
and as you can see, it's already drawing. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's when it gets dull. I'm at least do one side. You could let this dry overnight, but here's the deal. If you do, if you're doing some uh, a bunch of plates and you let them dry overnight, do heat it up with either a blow dryer because this vinyl gets hard with that drying medium and it's really difficult to remove. But I try to take them off right away because they're soft and they come off like that. Okay, at least get one side done. Look how fast that heat stamping tool. What is that tool that you are using? Would you tell us about that, please? This is a, um, a heat stamping tool. It's used in crafting for embossing. And uh, you buy it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, online. And it doesn't do wind, it just heat. Um, I, there is a heat tool that you, that, um, for guys in the workshop, but it, it really, it'll burn, it'll burn that final, but, um, it's a heat stamping tool. I think you can get it Hobby Lobby, Michael's recollections, whatever. Um, yeah, this one is so old. It heats up. Like I had to finish doing this because once it, it will have to cool down before I can use it again. Um, so, um, but you can use your blow dryer if you want, but it goes, it doesn't go as fast. It helped Susan Thumb do a seminar and she had like 20 some, we had two heat tubes going. They were doing a border with chickens. And I mean, we were knocking them out left and right with the heat stamping tube versus the, um, versus the blow dryer. Um, I've got a little dental pick or pointed tweezers. The only thing you're gonna want to pay attention to is I try not to lift on the edge because you can bump that. You can fix it, but um, also if you have it kind of sticking off the edge, look at that. Here's your resist. What gave me the idea to do this type of thing is I took a, a, a class that did a scratching. It was a demo and I'm like, and I did uh, scrapbooking. So I'm like, why couldn't I use my vinyl? I was, my girlfriend did a lot of, uh, scrapbooking so she taught me how to use I, I tried her Cricut cutter and you can use silhouette any kind of cut machine or whatever but I was like why are we scratching this out if we can be um if if I have a resist which is nice I mean sometimes if you get this design in um and you feel like you need something else you can adjust it see like that's not really clear right there um, I am going to get, um, the best thing is that these little orange wood sticks, if you don't have them, it's with the points, you can use an old pin point, um, uh, uh, that you do your pin work with and you can clean that up. But again, um, I would say in our class, I think the last hour is dedicated to this, um, So see, you've got your design already done. When it, um, and because I have the mother pearl already in there, underneath there, it's gonna show through. If I don't find, I don't feel like um, it's enough, I will go back, you can put one on the outside. Um, this was the mother pearl on the outside. I have another piece I'm gonna show y'all. Um, I do, I've tried different lusters on top of that white. And um, this uh, is a green pearl. I don't know if the camera's gonna let me do that. I'm um, gonna show y'all some not so appealing. I think I have it here. Um, Cause that may be one of those questions. Uh, oh, I can grab it real quick, right here. What works? So, so if you didn't want to put the mother pearl on this, and I think I covered this in the first one, but I'm going to reiterate it. I don't think I've showed y'all this. The yellow pearl works great. This was a brown luster over this after it's fired. 
it didn't grab on that. And I don't love it. I went back and pen worked it. I don't love it. This was a light brown. So I've tried different things and it's a love hate relationship. Again, I would, I would test it. However, liquid bright. I'm sorry about this glare, y'all. I'm really trying to um, do this. Liquid bright over that um, instead of the mother of pearl is absolutely gorgeous. And that is pen worked. So that is a neat effect. Um, another one of my favorite is palladium. It is gorgeous. Um, I did another piece. I think I wore this last week. Just giving y'all some ideas of different borders. Um, so once it's fired, I went over with palladium and I just felt like the, the it was just too bright. Um, so after it was fired, I did try to rub like uh, some draw, like a drying medium with um, black and it was just streaky. So y'all not gonna believe what I did. After everything is fired, I grabbed some rub and buff. This is for frames and it antique this, it dries, it's an oil paint. So it's not gonna, um, I'm not gonna be washing it. It's, uh, I've, I've used it on some of my designs, but look at that. It just antiqued it beautifully. Again, you could have used your black and, and did that, but it just didn't give me the same effect as this. And this, I did not have to fire. So that's just another tip. Um, if you have copper luster, copper is gorgeous over that fired base for gold. Um, so that's another um, one more. Uh, and then I still see I have time to do a little marbleizing. This was base for gold. This was some, some of my vinyl designs, the little feathers. Um, and then it was fired. So it was uh, shiny, but I went back and took some brown and painted over it. And it really made it look old. And it just gave it a different, a different effect. I did this with a, a giraffe plate with the little giraffes and the brown and the gold. And it was just, it's just, I just have fun with the texture. I've got something I'm, I'm gonna show y'all too. That's really neat. Um, Take some liquid bright. You could do a border this way. This is liquid bright, fired. And I took uh, the ruby and the black and painted. I'd forgotten I had this, I remembered after. It's an orchid. I'll uh, post a picture that's a little bit better, but you can paint over liquid bright gold. And then wire wrapped and let me see the back is finished. But anyway, you can paint over that. It's not a texture per se. Daphne, um, do you fire the base for gold before you add the luster? Oh, yes. Because if you do that, um, I did have a student want to do it one step. And I'm like, no. But she said it's dried as far. And I said, no, we'll have a chemical reaction. So, no, you definitely want to um, fire that first. Thank you. That's a great question. Okay. So, um, Susanna, are we clear uh, on, on how will we proceed? Now, after it's fired, um, you can do your little enamel dots. That's a quick little demo. Um, again, I would fire it first. And I, my favorite. Um, They're asking firing temperatures. Oh, firing temperatures. Um, most of my stuff is um, uh, 017 or 1450 degrees. For, um, you can go a little hotter with the base for gold, but if you have that mother of pearl, um, if you're going to fire over it, some of your uh, lusters fire at a lower temperature. So do check the uh, label. Most mother of pearls will take a 1450 degree fire, um, yeah, firing, but some of your other lusters will um, need to be fired a little bit lighter, uh, lower. Also, another tip, um, greens. I, I know if y'all flew with lusters, greens are one of those things. They do not like to be fired with anything else. So you have to fire them lower. Some greens will turn like blue gray. So that's another thing. Again, I don't, I don't go over any of the pastel. Um, 
I keep it in that range because I played with them and I even tried a turquoise over this um, border and it just, I don't know, the darker colors just don't work. So um, pretend this is fired, take all that off. And Susan, interject anytime if you've got a question or if anybody has a question. Um, so after it's fired, the same consistency. Shoot, if y'all have problems with your eyes, you might want to put a little food coloring. Again, this is the thick. Hey, Connie had a question, Daphne. Can she use lavender essence instead of mineral spirits? That was back in the painting part. For, for the thinner? Yes. Yeah, I think you can. Um, I tried delimining, but it dried too fast. Uh, you can thin it with whatever. You just, uh, the turpentine was too oily. Try it. The lavender essence may, may work just fine. So all I did, um, did I answer your question? Uh, uh, turpentine works. I'm just allergic. I have a situation with turpentine. Turpentine did not work for the, um, the dots. Uh, the uh, petal spots. So you're just going to be dropping some little dots. Actually, this works great as a demo uh, for, then you can see where you're putting your dots and how big they are. So maybe you do want to at home use some, a little food coloring, but let me tell you, it's a mess. Okay. And I see, I have about 15 minutes and that's all it's going to take me um, to do the marbleizing. Um, again, if y'all wanted to do the border, it's very striking in black and white. I think we have a few people that um, didn't, didn't take the first class. This is the same, let me get this in here. Oops, which way do I go? This is in black and white and a black and white border. This vase is actually has an ivory luster on it first and then um, just black. And then the, the best demo to do those vinyls are in black and white. So you can really look at that. I've got <laughs> that food color and it's like glitter. It's a nightmare. Okay. So um, one more thing. And I think we're, we're about done. If you have any questions, let me, let me know. I'm going to show y'all real quick. And I mean, real quick, this marbleized border. These are some other plates. If you, those of you that didn't see the first um, firing, I think maybe one of y'all had uh, not seen it. Uh, this is another option. I just wanted those white um, flowers to pop with that white border. I did a test. This is a great way to use your grainy ruby colors. Do not throw them out. Do not try to grind them. I mean, you'll get carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, I've just not had any success. I know that people had other techniques saying that they could grind it. You can get them only so smooth. I just test all my ruby and pink colors, um, but this is a great way to get use out of your um, grainy purples. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna do a quick little marbleized demo. Um, some of you may already know how to do this, but in case you don't, let's either review or here we go anyway. Okay, all I did was take some black and equal. If you have dextrin, that's another thing, but I mean, we're talking equal, the same thing. I do not put this in my coffee, it does not. <laughs> so I mixed a little bit, but you're gonna probably do like, um, Nah, three parts color to one part equal. What the equal does is sugar. Um, I went to do a demo and I did not have equal. Sweet and low works. I haven't tried Stevie, but I'm sure any kind of sugar, because I think Vita Clocky also has some uh, videos on her page. Is it Vita? Oh, no, no, no. It's Kim Miles. She tested um, all kind of water-based mediums. So if y'all want to go see her demos, um, uh, I, I noticed that she was doing, just happened to be doing um, demos on marbleizing and she tested everybody's stuff. So this is, uh, is this water? No, okay. I okay. that was the odorless uh, stuff. So again, I just mixed um, a little bit of black paint and equal. 
This is just water, y'all. I'm gonna get it super runny. This is like the messiest thing. Um, again, you're going to, uh, okay, I'm trying to find my other little thing here. I got so much stuff I'm playing with here. I've got one done and it is, we got stuff everywhere. This is really not good. Um, I just threw it on this morning before. I would have uh, thinned it down a little bit more, but see, it's really hard. This is uh, spritzed on. I'm going to actually give you a demo, but um, the reason I just put this on here was to show you that you can get this done in one fire. I am looking for an old brush. Yes, I have one. Okay. This is just, I mean, you're going to put it on so sloppy. It's just unreal. And the faster you do it, the better. Real runny, messy, because you're going to clean it up later. That's all I did for those. This. I've got some alcohol. You're going to spritz it. You're going to let it run. It's going to be messy. You can drop in some alcohol. I would take my time and, and get some really, let it run and get some really cool effects. You don't want too much black. I've got too much black on this, okay? Again, I did it a few minutes. I was gonna do it last night, but we ended up having to pick somebody up at the airport and I was too tired to do it last night. <laughs> and I didn't even know if I would have time. So uh, you would let that run, get some interesting effects. You would clean it up. So we're gonna pretend we got all this running quite nicely. And you're gonna want to have spaces. You're, you, you can't really control how the alcohol moves. It's just, you don't wanna have too much black but you want to have enough. So just have some interesting um, effects. You can do a little tester like that. Again, this is dry. I did it literally before Suzanne signed me on. And because it is dry and I can do it at the same time, your oil and your water is not going to mix. So for all those border plates with the orchids, I was able to come back over and I'm not gonna disturb that. I have a semi-open medium and I just came back over it. We're gonna pretend that this was a little bit more, um, had a little bit more white in it. I'm just putting thin layer. I will clean it up. I'm excited I got everything in and we're almost on time. An hour. I know Suzanne can go a little longer, but I think an hour is just just about right for um, a Zoom demonstration. So once this is fired, I you will have something like this. The only thing I change when I do, um, I guess the warm colors, I did mix a little bit of dry black and dry dark brown because I think it's a little softer with the warm colors on the um, uh, pink orchid plate. I actually mixed a little bit of my grainy ruby in with the black and did the same marbleizing technique, spritz you know, with water real messy. I dripped with alcohol, let it play, let it run around and everything till I got a really cool effect. You can let it dry or you can hit it with that heat tool and um, go back. And I did, I think, pecan and yellow brown on this. And this was all one fire. Every one of those plates were one fire. So that's another border technique that you can uh, do um, if you want. I think I did it all and I got five minutes to spare. So I'm ready for questions and I will move. If you would like to ask Daphne a question, unmute yourself and ask her a question now. Okay. Whew. One hour speed race. <laughs> your, your presentation was fantastic, Daphne. We really enjoyed 
seeing the textures and the orchids and finishing it up with the second fire. Um, I think someone has a question. Are you kidding me? I heard somebody say, uh, if you were trying to ask a question, I hear you. Hello? Yes, I hear you. Okay, this is Brenda Archibald. Hey, um, Brenda. Hi, darling, I can hardly wait. I have a question. <laughs> Uh, yes. When you did your your borders and stuff, and then you did it um, uh, on the mother of pearl, and then you did uh, it's dry and it's fire, and then you do your second. When you just did the color with the um, um, you know you did the spritzing and the alcohol with it, you still fire that at 017 as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, unless your color you have like a ruby color, you can go a little hotter because it's just okay. black and. Um, um, if you fire, if your colors need a little bit hotter fire, you can go a little bit hotter. Okay, good. So basically, it also depends on the piece. Um, sometimes I fire really inexpensive uh, china and tiles and stuff like. Uh, so those don't take a hotter fire. So it just depends on your porcelain. But yes, you can go a little hotter. Fabulous! You did a great job. Thank you. I miss you. I'm heading your way later. <laughs> And the Texas after this. Any more questions? <laughs> okay, well, Anna, Debbie. Anna, Anna has a question. Okay. Anna, you're not muted. You're unmuted. She's talking, but I can't hear you, Anna. Anna, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I see, I see you, but I, I don't hear you. Okay, Anna, you can, you're, all, you're live now talking. Daphne, you said that the green lusters you fired at a lower temperature. What temperature was that? Is that 018 or? Now I can't hear Daphne. <laughs> Daphne's muted. Okay. Daphne, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, I had to hold the space for. Okay, I don't know why it, it muted me. Okay, um, the green? Yes. Okay, you have to test each each one. The older greens could take a hotter fire, but you can't get them anymore. They got they have uranium in it and Hanovia doesn't make them. The newer greens, um, you can go down as last fire, 019. Also make sure you don't have a liquid bright in the kiln at the same time, because that is a, luster and that will affect the green it's a, it's a test it's a it's a shot in the dark I've, you know okay thank you you can even go less far and less uh greens are temperamental any other questions oh deborah yeah i have one that Ar armadillo oil what is that can, can that, i get it in Canada? i sell it I've tried other drying mediums with this technique and it, it works, but it's tough. This just dries really fast. I had a, a chem, um, one of my family chemists help me formulate this. I don't know what's in it, but I do sell it. Contact me and I'll get you some. And you can ship it to Canada? Uh, yeah, as long as I don't, I, I shipped it to Canada once. I didn't, I shouldn't put it as, I thought perfume would get through. It was in customs for a month. Uh, I ship it as paint and supplies. It will get there. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Daphne. Can I can you um send out your email address as well or how I how you order from, from you? Um you know what? Because this is going to be recorded on, you know, whatever can yeah. can you get with um Suzanne, how will we get my uh, email address to, to Deborah? Uh, or you can find me on Facebook. Are we friends on Facebook? I don't think so. I'm under Daphne I'll Stevens. Look. Okay, I'll look. S-T-E-V-E-N-S. But Thank I you. think Suzanne, since she sent out, she could probably get you my email address. Excellent. Thank you. At the, at the iPad Zooming um, at gmail.com, you can ask your questions there. And Excellent. then we'll Thanks, Daphne, and we can send it back to you. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. I'll make sure you can get in contact with me if y'all have any other questions after the fact. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was excellent seeing you and meeting you. Oh, thank you. Okay, do we have any more questions? Well, Daphne, thank you so much for sharing your talents with us. We really enjoyed it and learned a lot today. And 
I can't wait to go try some of those uh, water-based and oil-based borders you taught. Have fun. Have Thank fun. You again. Play. And uh, everybody, happy painting. Oh, look.